Bad on Bears fans, another edition of the Chicago Bears podcast coming your way. Pat the designer back at it again. Appreciate you guys for tuning in and showing love as you always do. If you haven't done so, by the way, hit that like button, subscribe to the page, leave a five star review. Y'all know what to do because this is going to be your go to spot for Chicago Bears content Monday through Friday. The Chicago Bears podcast always got you covered here on YouTube and, of course, wherever you can get your podcast man we got a lot to talk about on today's episode man Yannick Ngakwe says that he's back so we got to talk about the Bears possibly being in on Yannick Ngakwe and what that could mean for this defense moving forward Bears also favored to sign a very interesting player ahead of training camp David Bakhtiari a name that uh, has been thrown the Chicago Bears way. Should the Bears be in on David Bakhtiari? Going to look through his resume, being a Packer at that. And then uh, once again, Matt Eberflus, uh, still the betting favorite heading into the season right now to win Coach of the Year. Is it his award to win? We'll talk about all that more on today's episode of the Chicago Bears podcast. Hit that like button, subscribe to the page, leave a five-star review. Y'all know what to do. Listen, let's start it off with Unique. He is he is the the most interesting player of interest for the Chicago Bears for me right now. And we get an update from Unique Ngakwe over on his Twitter page at Unique Ngakwe. He drops a video of himself going through the workouts, going through the motions, trying to figure out, okay, yeah, you know I mean, or or trying to trying to showcase that, hey, this is where I am. This is what teams are going to be getting. Here we go. And the caption is, he's back with the gorilla emoji. Yannick Ngakwe seems like he's back in good health, and he seems like he's a player who is looking and ready to be signed. And the he's back to me uh, is the signal for that. Hey, listen, let's start the conversations. Let's start. Let's start figuring out what we're trying to accomplish here, and let's figure out what team I'm going to be on at the end of the day. And he is the biggest name right now on the market for me if I am the Chicago Bears front office because to me, Yannick Ngakwe, listen, I, I mean, we've talked about him probably at nauseum on this podcast, mostly because he's the only guy really left out there that's really worth going after. But when you talk about his last season, down season, 22 combined tackles, nine assists, Four sacks last year, not the unique Ngakwe of years before where, yeah, the tackles weren't that much different, right? 29 combined tackles year before, 11 assisted, but nine and a half sacks season before that, 10 sacks season before that, eight sacks between two separate teams, right? That's the unique Ngakwe you're really used to getting. And now you feel like if you're the Chicago Bears, you have a real opportunity to go out there and add a impact piece right away how do you not do that and a piece right again we had heard the chicago bears want to get a discount defensive end in here to try and make some things work for you unique and has got to be coming in at a discount you would assume he's not coming in at the same price last season and does he finally want to be a part of a defense and not to say there's not some defenses out there that could go get him that he could be a dog on right but does he finally want to be a part of a defense that seems like it has something going on the other side of it to help him as well he's never been a part of a defense that has allowed him that opportunity on the offensive end, right? Where the offense comes out, they put up points. And now as a defender, as a defensive end, as a guy who's rushing the passer, I can pin my ears back and just go. I think that is going to be one of the big things that's really enticing about what the Chicago Bears can offer here, especially with a lot of the pieces you've seen added on that offensive side. Don't be surprised if you see a guy like Yannick Ngakwe go out there and say, yeah, there's some other teams out here. I want to listen to some other deals. I want to listen to these other deals because I want to get my value up, right? He knows that he's coming in with a lower value right now. And yeah, he's the last guy on the market. The teams are going to want to sign, but coming off an ankle injury, coming off of one of his worst seasons of all time, are is, is every team going to be willing to take that risk? And even if they are, are they going to be in a position for the, uh, like the Chicago Bears are where you feel like offensively, hey, we've got some things moving in the right direction. If you put this kid on the field and Caleb Williams and Roma Dunze and Keenan Allen and DJ Moore and right, like all of these names that we list off every time we talk about this offense, just to feel good as Bears fans, right? That's really what it comes down to at the end of the day. We say the list of names because it makes us excited. We all get tingly inside, right? Does he want to be a part of something that probably allows him to be the vet, the best version of himself defensively that he's ever been? Oh, by the way, you've also got a pretty good defensive unit behind you. 
That to me is something that I do wonder with Unique and Gakwe. Not to say that I think he's going to come in here on a low money, no money type of deal. Not to say that I think Unique and Gakwe is going to be a right. He he comes into this team and he's a okay. I'm taking ten million dollars over two years type of player. But can you work out a maybe a multi year deal, two to three years, maybe a team option in that third year or something where you give him maybe a little bit more in the front end and you make it back in the back end? I can see the Chicago Bears doing something like that for him. And the fact that he's as confident as he is coming into this season, coming off of the injury, um, when you see him move in the videos, and that's what I love. I, I got to give you neat credit as well, right? When you when you talk about a player who it knows, okay, I got to get my value up. I got to market myself. Every single video update that he's done has been him running. Like you got to give him credit for just the marketing of it, him doing side-to-side -side drills, him running the track, right? Like he's done all of those. And, and to me, right, again, this is not football speed. You don't know what it's going to be. Uh, he's got one on there that that uh, he's literally just doing like the push off drill uh, and basically saying what ankle, you know what I mean? But the fact that he understands, OK, listen, this could get dicey for us here in this entire process. We may need to go out there and invest in some uh, or, or put some videos out here to show these guys that I'm worth investing in that. No, this is not a fluke. This is not a one it, or th this season, I should say, was a fluke. It's not a down year. It's not indicative of what my future is going to be with the Chicago Bears. I think you got to take uh, uh, um, that into account as well. Just being able to actually see it, being able to visibly see what he looks like and, and see the confidence that he has in himself, the willingness to not just put it out to the teams, but to put it out to the world, right? How many people are going to comment on this? How many people are going to see this? How many people does that go out to? That shows you how confident he is and still the player that he can be and to me, that's a player I want on my team. Let me know how you guys feel in the comments below. Do you feel like Unique Ngakwe is still a good option for the Chicago Bears? Drop Y in the comments uh, for yes. Drop N in the comments for no. Let me know how you guys feel in the comments below. If it's me, listen, you guys know my feelings on it. I'm all in on bringing Unique Ngakwe back. I think as a defensive, as a defensive unit right now, right, a lot of the questions you have are instantly answered um, because nobody thinks Unique Ngakwe's career is over. Nobody thinks he's done as a player. Nobody's sitting here. He's a 29-year-old player, still young enough for you to get two to three solid years out of him if you wanted to bring him back on a multi-year type of deal. Unless Ryan Poles wants to go out there and maybe, hey, we're going to do another one-year deal and, and we'll give you a little bit more money than, than anybody else will. But you know what? We know that you're going to be here and you're going to be able to go out there and be successful. But I would love to see Unique and Gakwe opposite Montez Sweat because that just makes things easier on the young guy uh, in Javon Dexter, who you need to see the most development out of this season, who has to be a breakout player for you this season. And on top of that, if you do see that development in him and he's actually able to put the pressure in the face of a lot of these quarterbacks that you're going up against this season, what are we talking about? You've got the option of, of running away from Montez Sweater, Yannick Ngakwe. You know what that's called? That's called not running away. That's called you rushing the pass, you trying to get the football out a heck of a lot quicker, and now you put yourself in a bad position where, to me, legitimately, the best DB unit in the NFL is back there waiting for the football to come to you. Let me know, like I said, how you guys feel in the comments below. I'd be all in on Yannick Ngakwe uh, re-signing with the Bears, and if he says he's back, I believe him. Let's talk about some other signings that the Chicago Bears may be in on. Let me know you guys' comments in the or thoughts in the comments below as well on this because the Bears are favored to sign David Bakhtiari ahead of training camp. Now, when I saw this news come across my timeline, bro, like, okay, what kind of conversation are we really having here? What are we talking about when the Chicago Bears are favored to sign David Bakhtiari? Is this a good move for the Bears overall? Let me know in the comments below. Um, let's start here. David Bakhtiari right now. And this is not a slight to who he is as a player. This is not a slight to what his career has been. He's been a phenomenal player over his time. But he's a 32-year-old going on 33-year-old offensive tackle who has had health concerns over the last four seasons, basically. Since 2019, he's only started 25 games. The belief around David Bakhtiari is that he still wants to be a starting piece for a team. 
And I just don't see that as an option here in Chicago. Listen, I'm not a Braxton Jones fan. I don't think anybody would confuse me for one. Not to say that I think he's the worst left tackle in the league, but I, I think that you could have upgraded that position through the draft, whatever it is. But that doesn't mean you go out and get a guy like David Bakhtiari unless he is willing to take a backup role, unless you're trying to bring him in for some camp uh, uh, camp competition, maybe some knowledge, kind of teach Darnell Wright and and uh, Braxton Jones. Okay, this is what you this is where you guys are missing on this. This is what you need to do. This is how you can go about addressing this. And what we heard uh, the last we heard from David Bakhtiari uh, in June, what he took when he talked to ESPN, he said that his goal, uh, my goal right now, is to just make sure that I'm not only fully recovered, but I can withstand and play the game that I want to play, but also play and be there for my team no matter what. I'm not a reliever guy. I am your cornerstone guy, someone that's not only going to play in September, but in December and into February, and obviously, hopefully, other cup for another couple years. But here's the truth of the matter. He's not. I love the sentiment. I love the conversation. I love the uh, 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 the 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 excitement around what he wants to come back as. But very different from the conversation we just had with Yannick Ngakwe, where you know he 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 had a down season because there wasn't anybody else on that defensive line that was making any impact, and he broke his ankle when there finally was somebody. Uh, David Bakhtiari has not been David Bakhtiari since 2018. It's not even a question. And when he's on the field, is he good? Sure. Still got some problems with some penalties. He's always had problems with some penalties. He's a, he's a guy who's willing to be a little bit more aggressive and hold. But the David Bakhtiari of 2013 to 2018 or 2019, I'll give him 2019, of 2018 to 2019 or 2013 to 2019 has gone away four seasons ago. That happened during the COVID year. So let's not get this confused. And let's not sit here and take chances on guys on the offensive line who want to be starters on the offensive line if it's not actually an upgrade to the position. Now, again, this is an upgrade over Braxton Jones if you put David Bakhtiari out there. Nobody would be confused by that. But let's not get it twisted. David Bakhtiari is a player that has shown you over the past three seasons he's not going to be out there. Something's going to happen. You usually don't see that start to course correct as time continues to go on. This is why the Packers are willing to let him move away. This is why you have other teams that are looking to be suitors. I love the idea of David Bakhtiari coming in as a backup, a guy that has to fill in, a guy that has to step in. Not to say he's not the more talented guy, but I just can't trust you to be on the field. How can I build a real offensive line around you? And I'll say this as well, right? I do agree with him that when healthy, he is a cornerstone piece. He is that big name guy. He is everything that he said he was. But with how the Bears offensive line is currently set up right now, I can't risk having another starting piece that may not be out there. I got that struggle already. Our David Bakhtiari is Tevin Jenkins. I've got a guy on the offensive line right now who maybe won't even be on the offensive line. Now, I guess in a different situation, right, you bring in Bakhtiari, you got to look at it from both angles, right? You got to be able to see, okay, well, what if they do bring in David Bakhtiari? To me, if you bring in David Bakhtiari, he's your starter. I don't like it, but he's your starter. I would try moving Braxton Jones into left guard. I don't know if he can play left guard, but you just brought in a much better left tackle or you let somebody who's competent there play left guard, one or the other. But I would I would assume, right, the love they have for Braxton Jones, maybe they try him somewhere else. He's a fine tackle. Maybe he's a better guard. You move him into left guard. You move Tevin Jenkins back to right guard. 
You've got now Tevin Jenkins and Darnell Wright on the right side. That was something that was dominant last season that I think really would benefit the Bears if they went back to that. Nate Davis is the odd man out. Maybe you facilitate a trade for a guy like Nate Davis. You try to get him out of here. You try, hey, listen, anybody need a right guard who's, who's out there? Because he's the he's the question mark in all of this, right? He's the guy that's like the biggest question if you're talking about, okay, who's the guy that we're sure is not going to be the, the big camp participant? We got our answer there we don't need to we don't need to really go into detail on that and then you've got ryan bates as your starting center and or coleman shelton either or i don't know which one's going to be the better i would assume ryan ba it's ryan bates job to lose at this point but now you've got your entire offensive line locked up the question mark is though is it with david bakhtiari talking as confidently as he is when he's talking as big as he is does he think that he's still going to get that big contract does he think he's got a massive number coming his way? And to me, there's no way you can pay that. You can't risk big money because you're nervous now at the left tackle position that you could have addressed. David Bakhtiari isn't even a, a dream for me. It's, it's just something that like, well, you, you ever have those dreams where like you, you're, you're there and you're like, everybody, they're like, everybody's dream means something. And you're like, what the heck does this mean? Like there's, there's a, there's a alligator and we're at my grandmother's house. And for some reason there's spiders everywhere. And David Bakhtiari walked in holding a hand. That's, that's what this is to me. That's this kind of dream. I like Bakhtiari. I'm not saying that I'm not besmirching his career. I'm not saying that he he isn't exactly what, what he has been throughout his career. I'm not saying he hasn't been dominant. I'm not saying that when he's on the field, he can't be an absolute monster. But I hate to tell you this. That David Bakhtiari went away in 2018. That David Bakhtiari isn't on the field anymore. You've got 32 going on 33-year-old David Bakhtiari. He's a guy that's breaking down. You don't invest in those pieces. At least in my opinion. Let me know how you guys feel in the comments below about bringing in David Bakhtiari. Let me know your thoughts. Do you feel like he would be a good get for the Chicago Bears? I'm not going to lie. I wouldn't be mad at the offensive line that I mentioned there if healthy. Right? You, if, if you bring him in, I wouldn't be mad at Bakhtiari, Braxton Jones at left guard. Uh, center, although I don't know if Braxton Jones could play left guard, but you know, usually that that kind of translates. Center, you got Ryan Bates, right guard. You got Tevin Jenkins, right tackle. You got uh, uh, Darnell Wright. I would be mad at that offensive line. Heck, maybe that would give me a little bit more confidence running the football both directions. But healthy is the key word in that, and it's probably the biggest key word. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Drop Y for yes if you think the Bears should go out and get David Bakhtiari. Drop N for no if you think that uh, they should let him continue to be on the market and let him pass. I'm dropping an N myself on that one. Um, let's finish it off here. Appreciate you guys tuning in, showing love. Also, I uh, didn't mention this at the beginning. Sorry to that. But uh, brought, this episode is brought to you by the Hard Rock Casino in Northern Indiana, Las Vegas style gaming. Just 30 minutes from Soldier Field, exit six, right off of I-80. 94. Make sure that you tap in with our partners over at the Hard Rock Casino as well. Matt Eberflus is the betting favorite to win coach of the year. We had talked about this before when it had come out earlier in the year, but now, right, we're getting close to the season. Usually some of those odds uh, end up moving a little bit. This one has not moved in the slightest. And my question to the chat right now, is it Matt Eberflus' award to win? Is he the overwhelming, like, if he does it the right way, we're giving him the award. And what is it going to have to take for him to get it done? And this is this to me is is an interesting talking point when it comes to Matt Eberflus because I haven't forgotten the flus of years past. I know that people have the beard, the fade, everybody wants to forget the flus of years past. I have not forgotten the flus of years past. The flus of years past lost 14 straight games. The flus of years past made the same mistake in week four that he made in week 11. 
didn't learn from his mistakes. The flus of years past threw Jalen Jones out there twice in coverage. Jalen Jones, by the way, dropped back twice in coverage. Uh, there were two touchdowns scored on Jalen Jones in coverage in back-to-back -back weeks. That Jalen Jones or Justin Jones? Justin Jones. Who the heck is Jalen Jones? I feel like that's also a bear. I don't know. I don't know. Y'all yeah, yeah. let me know in the comments. I feel like Jalen Jones is also a bear, though. <laughs> Justin Jones drops back in coverage two weeks in a row. Two touchdowns dropped on his head. I haven't forgotten the Matt Eberflus of years past. And yes, I know that he was put in a situation where it was, hey, go out there and lose as many games as possible. I understand that. I understand that last year he had to deal with a situation that was more ideal, but maybe not, not ideal when you talk about how the defense was built and how pieces were put in place and the fact that you had no defensive line. And I understand that it got better when he got Montez Sweat in the building. But he got Montez Sweat in the building, was up 31 to 14 in a game. And then when uh, the, the Detroit Lions were crushing you in the fourth quarter, uh, not only did he tell his offensive coordinator, hey, maybe we need to put the ball in the air more than one time this half, but uh, you also might want to not take your two best defensive players off of the field and Montez Sweat and Tremaine Edmonds on the biggest drive of the, of the series, of the game. Let's be real. So I haven't forgotten the Matt Eberflus of, of years past. But I do think that if he is put in a position where he's winning consistently, and I think that he has been put in that position, I think that Ryan Poles has done an excellent job insulating him, very similar to how he has insulated Caleb Williams his first year. I think there's a lot of good coaches around Matt Eberflus this year. I think he took the decision-making of who are going to be the coaches on this team out of Matt Eberflus's hand. I think that you've got a ton of good players, great players on your team now, on both sides of the football now. If Matt Eberflus were to get to the playoffs, I think that the Chicago Bears would have another coach of the year candidate on their hands because of how big of a switch that would be. And remember, the last time we had the NFL coach of the year, it was because of how big of a switch it was during the season. That was Matt Nagy. He gets the Bears to the playoffs. Of course, we know how that season ends. But I think that that is like, here's the thing. The bar has been set so low for the Chicago Bears for so long that success is like, my God, you got success out of that team. Well, we got to give this guy an award for that. My, hey, shout out to you, buddy. That's literally how, they, like, if we're being real, if Caleb Williams looks like a competent passing quarterback his rookie year, he's rookie of the year. Book it right now. Spend your money. If Ryan, uh, uh, um, if Matt Eberflus, Coaches a team that gets to the playoffs. Not only is Matt Eberflus coach of the year, but you can book Ryan Poles for executive of the year as well. Book him. Because that's how low the bar has been set. For, I don't know when John Fox get here. Is that is that 10 years ago yet? Like eight years ago? Couldn't have been. 10 years ago is 2014. Eight years ago, I think John Fox showed up. Like the bar is just, it, it's unfortunately that low. And because of that, yeah, I do think that Matt Eberflus is absolutely not only the betting favorite, but I think it's his award to lose. Do you know how hard it is for you to like, and, and listen, there's still a lot that has to be done, right? To get to the playoffs, I think you're talking about having an 11 win season minimum. I don't think 10 gets it done. I don't think 10 gets you to the playoffs. I don't. I think 10 is a fun season. But I think you're talking about an 11-win season minimum to get into the playoffs. That's nothing to scoff at, especially with the second half of your season being against all your divisional opponents.
I just, I, to me, when I look at this Bears team, when I look at the opportunities that are afforded them, when I look at, okay, this is how your schedule lays out first half of the season, you could prove a lot. I think that he builds up a lot of cloud if he wins th- uh, uh, wins a good chunk of the games in the first half of that season. You get a lot of, like, a, a lot of love if you're winning those games. But, of course, you're looking at that daunting second half of the season, and that's where you can solidify the award. How do you solidify the award? Those last games versus the division? Don't split the division. You got to win some of those division series. You got to win the series versus the Vikings, who you've played defensively well. You haven't been able to put up points. This offense should be able to score. You've got to win the series versus the Lions. I think Packers split at this point. I I can't even say that we can win a series versus the the, the Packers, but like uh, winning a series versus the Lions is is something that yeah I, I know that they won the first game last season but i come into this season with a lot of like hey i kind of would expect this team to be able to go out there and do some good things against the lions again this year because what do the lions struggle with mobile quarterbacks i don't know if you know this or not caleb williams ain't slow we got the blueprint there put it on the wall don't worry about that if you do a good job versus your division in the second half of the season not only will you be in the playoffs but i think that locks up matt eberflus for an absolute coach of the year and like i said book the executive of the year for ryan poles book i mean like the the, the bears would have a clean sweep are there odds on that can you get odds on on clean sweeping rookie of the year Coach of the year and executive of the year. Has that ever been done? We got to find that out. It's had to have been done, right? Like if you get the quarterback right and you're winning. Chiefs, maybe? Chiefs? That that seems like a Chiefs thing. Did Andy Reid win coach of the year that year? We'll do some background check on that. But but to me, that, that's a... Like I would say that, yeah, if you want to talk about getting the 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 football version of the triple crown, that's triple crown. The Bears have an opportunity to triple crown. A serious opportunity. When you look at the job Ryan Poles did to put this team together, if putting this team together and in your first year you get to the playoffs, triple crown, let's do it. But to me, this is this is a like, I, I love the fact that we're hearing the Bears mentioned in these awards and different things like that. I think the biggest thing for the Bears this season, I think the biggest thing for the team this season is to just really be able to go out there, especially with hard knocks and everything happening around them. Just stay focused. If you can get off to a good start this season, I think that they can go a long way. And and I do think, listen, if Caleb Williams, like I said this before on the show, if Caleb Williams is half of what, he's being advertised as the bears are probably a uh, uh in the hunt playoff team if caleb williams is 70 percent of what he's being advertised as don't be surprised if we see the bears with the defense that ryan poles has built with how strong flus can coach a defense being a i would say a serious playoff team i'm not gonna say a contender just yet you gotta see that to believe it I haven't seen it in my God since Jay Cutler was here. Yeah, you know I mean, like, <laughs> but I would say, yeah, a serious playoff team, one that you got to keep an eye out for. And the best part about doing it with the players that the Bears have right now is Caleb Williams doesn't know he's not supposed to be good yet. That's the best part about doing it with young players. Like they just go out there and they're just like, I'm here to ball, I'm trying to win. They don't know, hey, you're not supposed to be this good. You're not supposed to be in this situation. <laughs> Everybody doubted us. It doesn't matter. You know what I mean? Like, you're not supposed to be here. That's the best part about doing it when you got young players on the team. But, uh, hey, man, let us know your thoughts in the comments below. Do you think that Matt Eberflus will be the favorite to win coach of the year? Let me know your thoughts on uh, do you feel like the Bears can pull off the trifecta? Can they clean sweep? this season i'll be down in the comments talking with you guys as well as always man it's your boy pat the designer back at it again hit that like button subscribe to the page leave that five star review y'all know what to do this has been another edition of the chicago bears podcast bear down chicago y'all stay safe out there man peace